You bluffed Hardman. Turned Monica Eaton and put us over the top on Folsom Foods. Now, that's a lot of coming through in the clutch. Hey, do you remember when you used to do those rotator cuff exercises? Oh, yeah. What are you kidding me? Of course. I didn't bamboozle you, Benjamin. I won it fair and square. And I've been tracking every internet move you've made for the past 10 months, waiting for the slip up. He needs a head on a platter. Why mine? You've been skirting environmental laws for a decade. No, it's a bribery charge. It's got teeth. It's coming your way. Don't sugarcoat it, Mr. Spectre. Freshly minted senior partner, expert in matters of corporate finance, and the man responsible for the superb training of the associates. You don't want a deal. What you want is a long, drawn-out trial that puts our stock in the toilet. I've been grooming Nick for 10 years. I've taught him everything he knows. The Nick you have stashed in a hotel room somewhere? You know, if you're going with boxers, you're not going to have them later. You're going to have to go smokeless. The character of Melvin Udall, expertly portrayed by Jack Nicholson and as good as it gets. Ah, never saw it. Nick wasn't swayed by your attempt to tug at his heartstrings. Emotional, please. You told me you knew this man. I thought that was an advantage. Instead, you've goaded him into orchestrating an attempt to take over my company. Yeah, you know what, Harvey? I don't want your sloppy seconds. That takeover attempt's going to be dead in the water the second that Ava Hessington's settlement goes public. No, you're right. You know what he's going to do? He's going to leverage his position, and he's going to get as much green mail as he can. Well, Katrina, I kind of had enough of being used by associates looking to move one rung up the ladder, so I suggest you get the hell out of my office and find yourself another whale. I have no idea what the evidence is because I had nothing to do with it. And you say it's irrelevant, but it's not irrelevant to me. Secretary pool has been buzzing about some new feisty ginger for a fortnight. I told him as long as he steers clear of me, he'll be fine. That would be emotionally distressing. You might even suffer from PTSD. Which would prevent them from getting on the plane and testifying in our case. They oh, no, you waited for her to fire me, and then you swooped in with an illegal fix. It's not an option. Okay, then I'm going AWOL. Not bad, Forrest. Okay, if I'm Forrest, then you're Bubba. Shrimp business. Harvey. Oh, all jammed up? I'm afraid so. You just need to coax it a little. Katrina, as much as I appreciate your suggestion, I refuse to operate in a duplicitous manner. Rachel. Stephen and I communicate a little more subtly. Suggestive banter, double entendres. We both know what we agreed to. It sounds to me like you agreed to a hot and steamy affair. Wow. You aren't having a heart attack, are you? Would that put a crimp in your evening? Yeah, until now, I believed that Harvey was the wild horse that couldn't be tamed, but perhaps it is you. You son of a bitch. You leaked it. You may enter. I'm afraid I've got a bit of a sticky wicket. Your sister? Yeah. Clutches for seven months. Serves a right. Dad's favorite. After two cups, your signature slants. After three, it scrawls. And after four, it's chicken scratch. First week, you come into class, Mr. Oh, I got the whole textbook memorized. I mean, the rest of us look like chumps. Now, you did that all by yourself. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to decide why I shouldn't call a couple of hard pie pit Negroes to come and work on you with a pair of pliers and a blowtorch. <laughs> that affidavit says I made a mistake, an honest mistake. And this one says, as my penance, I'm resigning. Oh, and find out what the holdup is on my trademark claim on Lit Up. At the best cat spa in the city, getting her nails buffed and her paws polished. A call in which we discuss the impediments to the pipeline. Jessica. It makes you disingenuous. It makes you look guilty. She was listless, you know? Like, I would take her out to see a bird, but that's not what This I'm... jury knows all about your parenting skills, which involve berating, belittling, screaming, sadism. Objection! Objection. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. That's what you're asking me. But if you think that I'm going to kneecap my star witness the day before the trial, you are out of your mind. Do you and I have a deal for you to testify in exchange for a more lenient sentence? You're on a short leash, Mr. Spectre. The gentleman invoked his rights. I know that you gargle before meetings that make you nervous. The client just called. The contract Harold sent over has a loophole in it. Leaves him open to punitive damages. He's succeeding. And the way you got this victory was by going after his career. And you're just yanking him right back down. See? Blinders. What? Lewis was just suggesting that he run the negotiations. Lewis also suggested the firm adopt a badger as a mascot. The badger is a noble and fearsome creature, but that's not the point. I can beat him. Harvey, remember Koppelman? Comeovers like that are hard to forget. Got a new cat? Foster. Well, what makes you think he's going to go for it? Because I went there, and they are primed to say yes. They just won't. 
You go to Stanford, we'll beat the odds. Hello, Scotty. Tanner, what are you doing here? Oh, I just came to bring you a coffee in the morning. After meeting you, I'd say there's an 80% chance there's a roofie in there. <laughs> no roofie. You loved him, he spurned you, and you set this whole thing up to get him back. Take the shackles off and let me convince her this fight isn't with me, it's with Edward. He's been... Oh, shoot, it's blanking out. I'm coming after you because you're a worthless ambulance chaser and I'm not going to let you take my client's money. You didn't even flinch. That means you're ready. Then why are you still walking with me? I think Mike Ross went to a subpar law school and has been lying about it the whole time. Imagine that. Mike Ross went to Harvard. What a shocker. You were right. Never should have doubted it. You have to sign an ironclad non-compete. You can't represent any Pearson Spectre clients if you leave. It's okay, Lewis. No, no. I breached your mainframe. No excuse. Your move didn't work. I didn't go into a tailspin. They're the ones that make the medicine that stent was coated with. So Mr. Smarty Pants couldn't even manage summa cum laude? Yeah, well, come on. I aced that class with my eyes closed. Well, what are you so happy about? I made bubble wrap slippers this morning while you were in the shower. Harvey is right. This guy is a prick. He makes everybody read his books and then doesn't even test on them. I'm implying he's not dead a week and you want to strip his name off the door and into oblivion. I think it's possible they waited to pounce. It's also possible. I'm telling you, Harvey's gonna walk in there, he's gonna find the lump, and Henry Gerard is not gonna know what hit him. I don't consider blackmail a favor. I doubt the trustees will care about semantics when they see that. I landed that company when they were a regional shithole, and I don't need some interloper to- Scotty's a senior partner, Lewis. Uh, this rule shall not be abridged by any circumstance, including but not limited to family illness, criminal detention, and travel delay for without Punctuality, we are animals. I'm saying that A. Elliot Stemple is not ducking you today. Lewis. Jessica, I want to know where I fall in the pecking order with regard to Dana Scott. Oh, if you'd had rebuttals like that, maybe you would have gotten past me in moot court just once. What happened to the skirt chasing degenerate I knew back at Harvard? Elliot Stemple, that's a blast from the past. You should have seen his smug face when he realized he couldn't duck me. And before she did, she stated on the record that she got shafted because you had a personal vendetta against your opposing counsel. Well, those are bogus charges concocted by a jealous competitor who will stop at nothing. Scotty's new, okay, so just cut her some slack because when those training wheels pop off, she's gonna be really, really good. Look, I could take the losing, the gloating, and the taunting, but what I can't take is losing to a coward who's too afraid to stand up and try and beat me again. What the hell are you talking about? It was rigged. I bribed the jury. You wanna know why I did that? because you were an arrogant bastard who skated through life without a care in the world, getting everything you wanted from anyone you needed. We need to talk. Not now, I'm carbo loading. I want to leave an Elliot Stemple skid mark. Then there's your answer. Um, I'm sure you heard about Dana Scott's throttling of me. That is a soy caramel latte with a double shot of fear and guilt. That is an apology coffee. Let me guess, even though he didn't show up to the meeting, he's feeling left out and throwing a hissy fit. My friend made life decisions based on this promise. She could sue for promissory estoppel. I wouldn't let him, and you know what? That's not the problem. What is the problem? The problem is he made me a chump. Everybody wins. That's what you said about Beck. So you want me to spin off my own company? I run it, he owns it? It's taken me years and years to get the people here to see past my short temper and my weird obsessions. The guy shows up with chicken vindaloo 40 minutes late with no non and no silverware. Instead of throwing the chutney in his face, I'm thanking him. The spin-off idea, yeah. I should have known. He wants you to be his general counsel? No. no. It was a good move. Oh, it would have been if our own bylaws didn't supersede it. What? That's bullshit. You may have blurred some lines, but you certainly didn't cross any fight him. The IPO's wrapped up. We go public Monday morning. You guys are well rehearsed. I mean, I can't believe this whole thing's been going on. I've been completely out of the loop. Lewis, I don't want to rehash it. Right now, Mike's in custody. We need to get him out. Yeah. I demand to see my client. You can see him, but I'm not letting him go, because in five minutes, I'm going to come back to him with a sledgehammer. They're circling, and you know it. How many egg rolls are in here? Two. How am I supposed to do that when there are mushrooms in my lo mein? Why do I keep you around again? Director. Me too. I just threw that in to make sure you weren't yes manning me. Okay, first of all, Edna was 63 when Daft Punk was born. First of all, I don't appreciate you stomping into my office with an attitude. It didn't happen because they squandered it. It happened because they stayed a dinosaur. Instead of failing to be charming, why don't you do something useful and get moving on drawing up a tender offer for Logan Sanders? 
If he doesn't stop lying to me, I'm going to cut him looser than Jared's pants after a Subway diet. Listen, if you don't back the hell off my interrogation, I'm going to pick his scrawny ass up and use him to beat the shit out of you. No, that was exactly my thought 10 seconds before I was slumped on the courtroom floor. Well, they can with half that billion, but they won't because, like I said, he's hoarding it for that pipe dream. Gillis is not going to see it that way. He's just going to see some slick banker who sold him a bill of goods just to end up doing what everybody else was at least up front about. Sometimes bitter memories become bittersweet. Think I could take a look at it when you're done? Mm, I think not. Is that just a, a proofread? No, 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 still no. Well, you know, just awkwardness, especially since Jessica just bowed out and it's just me and you now. It's a call with an analyst predicting a downturn in small cap stocks in the next quarter. You have a week to deleverage my company. That I'm looking at for my next deal and I need someone to evaluate them from a legal standpoint. It means that I'm not here to exchange pleasantries. I'm here to get that TRO lifted. But right now she's probably scrapbooking the first day of their relationship, which apparently happened just weeks after you broke her heart. No. I thought you'd have a better chance if the document was riddled with typos. This is important. I did, but your figures on the non-voting stock didn't add up, so I proposed a staggered board to make up for the imbalance. But Gillis Industries is ripe for a turnaround, and I already own 7%. I'm not sure what Jeff, disgruntled employee here, told you, but I'm still standing. And you must be the chump. Eric Woodall ordered to come after me. My first LBO. I was right out of school. All I wanted was that first tombstone, because it meant your first deal. And nobody's asking you to break the law. We're telling you to sidestep it. It is not fair. I have been juggling work and school for months now, and I, I haven't asked for any special treatment. Thou shalt have nothing but the forfeiture to be so taken at thy peril, Jew. Come on, let's go. This beeth awesome. Where's your script? Mm -mm. All right, look, I'm going to tell you something about myself that I never told anyone. I have stage fright. I don't know how you've structured Logan's payments, but I think it's time he paid his firm a hefty fee up front and something on the order of $20 million. I wear this ridiculous flesh-colored unitard and drape myself over my classmates. I spoke to her doctors. They said she fainted at school. She's fine. If she fainted, she's not fine. I have the worst case of cotton mouth in the history of... Oh, my God, that's got to be a cod piece, right? Logan got hauled down to the SEC. What? Logan, if we don't finish this now, you're going to have the SEC crawling up your ass day and night. I want you to go back over your work with a fine-tooth comb and make sure it's airtight. Even better. Because of his blunder, I'm going to make it as though his shitty deal never even happened. They went back in the market and he snatched him right up. What happened to the obsequious little shit who approached me in a coffee shop with his hand out? I know what you're not here for. To tell me after a long night of soul searching, you've decided to give me full control of Gillis Industries. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some Lipizzaner stallions to look at. I don't have any other options, Lewis. And I'm in this position because you paid that man green mail to walk away from my deal in the first place. You're damn right I am. And if you go to Jessica to try to overrule me, the next time, it won't be Mike you get in a fight with. It'll be me. I am taking this enforcement document and I am burying it deep in the bowels of these files. She's gonna limp you up to the 60th floor where you will find 30 years worth of files that haven't been sorted since the Reagan administration. The point is, while you're trying to find the Ark of the Covenant, we'll be downtown in front of a judge blocking this bullshit. Donna, I went to the bullpen, some guy with a soul patch was sitting at my desk. If you want to go rummaging around in a law firm's files, you better come to me with more than an innuendo. You're shitting me. Look in the top left drawer. You in? Sure as hell don't want to do an amicus brief for Paul Porter. What are you getting at? Didn't you say he sidestepped Judge Hopkins to get a search warrant for our files? Good news, Lewis. I not only misfiled and misstated that document. I was drowning. And Lewis threw me a lifeline. Pending verification of this signature. You gotta give him everything he asked for immediately. What are you talking about? When he came to me yesterday, he was chomping at the bit to help fight Cahill. That... He seemed relieved. He seemed ecstatic. We have nothing to hide. Uh, this is a ploy. Oh, yeah. It was um, in the back of the closet. Yeah, I know where it was. Why is it out here? This is the ball, Sean. It's a wrecking ball. And it's headed your way. What? You guys had your whole Wonder Twins riff and now you're giving him respect? What? I don't care what we get Arthur Cohen on. Tax evasion, insider trading, jaywalking if we have to, but we're putting that piece of shit behind bars. Jesus Christ, he's honing in like a bloodhound. It's only a matter of time. He unwound the Wexler shares after I specifically told him not to. I just cleaned it. It was 
Smudged, and I didn't want to give it back to him dirty. But well, why would I, when the love of my life rips out my heart and then stomps on it? Lewis, I'm just trying to help. Harvey didn't tell me, but I didn't just fall off the turnip truck. Just to allow my career to continue with dignity, and you couldn't muster the tiniest shred of compassion. No. You wanted to see me squirm. Every day after sparring in that, they make you do 100 laps and 50 pull-ups. Well, Lewis, go ahead. Give me all of the shittiest cases that you can find, but I'm telling you... Unless you want me going around town, flapping my big mouth that something isn't right in your kitchen. You oh, you're tapping out already? I thought you'd have a lot more backbone than that. You say you love the law so much, but every single case you've ever touched is tainted. Fine, what about the embossed ivory? What are you, crazy? I'm not paying that much, unless it comes with a reach around. I got something for you. Doc review. Filings to be done in triplicate. I'm not piling on. I am giving you this because it's non-billable work. Since your message was so cryptic, I'm assuming this is about business. What were you expecting? A ceremony and a brass band? We don't do that. I want pomp and circumstance in the form of an unveiling. I Let me you. finish. It was a stone-cold move. Between drafting Lewis's partnership agreement for Jessica and Lewis's never-ending onslaught, I didn't get any sleep. I even adjusted our books to hide the crime. And being a bloodhound about these things, Lewis found out. I haven't heard you say that since the midnight coup of Schmidt, Gordon, and Van Dyke. Yeah, but instead of being pissed at me, why don't you take a look in the mirror? Because we held out an olive branch. Then you know what, Harvey? You're no different than Lewis. Because you have a chance to help us all move on, and you were blowing it off out of pettiness, which is exactly what Lewis would do. Well, in that case, let me buy you two lunch. Because I'm about to come into an unexpected windfall. I care about what you're making me do, because I'm not suborning perjury. That's easy. The jumper over Elo. Wrong. The switch hand layup over Perkins and Green. The real tragedy is I have to get drinks with Lewis. Which is why I got you a secluded restaurant with a table in the back where no one will see you. I wasn't going to make anyone, partner. But I do admire your gumption. That will not make up for putting your whole life into a tailspin. Well, like you said, we've been pitted against each other since day one. I would have gotten out eventually. Not from where I was standing. I'm slippery. I told you I wrestled in high school. So you're playing matchmaker for me now. Well, I'm not playing anything. And you... We ran repeated tests on our heat sensors and they passed every one. Oh, you want to hit me now? Yeah? Well, why don't you go ask Mike Ross about my headlock because it's a goddamn vice. I knew you would bail on me the second this thing did the smallest bump. That money was going to change his life and then I dangled it in front of him and ripped it away. It just would have been some cushy white collar resort. Well, you sure did today. Because he's coming at us. And you're pouring gas on the fire. Because that's what I do, and I don't need you coming in here second-guessing how I do my job. Effective immediately, I'm tendering my resignation. There wasn't a day that went by that I didn't want to rip out one of her varicose veins and strangle her with it. And you want me to make sure these things are bequeathed properly? You can stuff them in a giant piñata for all I care. Lewis, this isn't about the urn. Oh, please don't give me that touchy-feely shit. And why the hell are you not being bad cop? She's gone. And it's gonna be okay. She was a battle axe! I have to say, Harvey, all things considered, you're taking this whole Donna Lewis thing in stride. Good. I'll get you a temp for a couple weeks and then we'll get started. Harvey swoops in and he takes him back from me at the last second. And you tell that to your bankers, word gets out, it's up for bid. Your competitors undercut you and your roommate won't be able to help you anymore. You know what, it doesn't matter, I don't need to know anymore. Of course, we'll cut Harvey all the slack in the world. We're leaving the pressure on your dictaphone. A census taker tried to test me once. To be fair, I was the one that came up with the defunct Canadian trucking company thingy. So. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're Normal work till midnight, eight days a week, and never bunt in an eye. Just your standard boilerplate. I don't want to start my marriage planning how it's going to end. I didn't storm out, I walked out, because you were doing a shitty job running it. What are you talking about? I had your back. There's one more thing. What difference does it make? I can't delay the sale if I don't know why my client is dumping his company on a whim. I used to be one of those people. And I scratched and clawed my way to where I am today. That's what Jack Soloff said yesterday. No, this is different. I've capped the amount it affects any one partner. We just needed some fine-tuning. Fine-tuning? You're the one that said you only let him bring it up so that you can smack it down. Can you believe that sneaker brings in over a billion dollars from China alone? Uh, okay. Harold and I pointed up last time because it was a special occasion. But tonight, drinks are on you, my friend. Because if you pay it, he won't know that we triple-starched all of his shirts. Well, if that's how you want to look at it, then pucker up, because that man is a threat. 
Because I'm pretty sure he's not taking time out of his busy morning to talk about centerpieces. I get it. You like stodgy and functional. But these are my chairs, just like this is my case. You're asking for a hell of a lot. I take your wingtips off of my table and walk them out the door. If you get there on time, you are. If not, and he starts whacking at shit with his big club, you might kill someone. You miss the whole thing. She faced discrimination at every turn, and she still got the job done, so she doesn't need soaring language to communicate that. What's the matter? No snappy comeback? Are you trying to outname drop me? So how is my favorite pain in the ass lawyer? You're doing the grunt work on our case? So if you're giving me a client, there's some other misunderstanding that you're too chicken shit to tell me about. You and Rachel are peas in a pod. Do I look like I buy a lot of potholders? Reminder, defend the walls in the conference room. Slash, make a peephole. What do you think you're doing? What happened? Oh, I was just checking the soundproofing, making sure they thicken the walls in the conference room. I'm talking about how the moment you walk through the door, you look like you were struck by a bolt of light. I did not. You most certainly did, in fact. Afraid or hoping? That's unsavory. And making lewd comments about our client isn't? Which constitutes an enforceable verbal contract. So I don't care. How could you not tell me that? Because it was a throwaway conversation we had 12 years ago on the New Jersey Turnpike. The original agreement supersedes it, and an affair doesn't change that. Mike, I know you think this deal sucks, but there is a silver lining. You don't care if Robert Zane is manipulating a case to service a hedge fund? It doesn't matter if I care. I can't violate attorney-client privilege. We're all squared away on the paperwork? No. And he's not dirty. Rachel. And the last time someone called him shady, it was Lewis, and you almost punched him over it. I did leap to his defense. You sure did. <laughs> And I pointed out to them that if they were to divest their shares to our clients who don't have insider knowledge, then they've done nothing wrong. And he's doing it just to go behind our back so he can attack our flank. So you're saying we need to watch our flank. And Donna, mm -hmm. trust me. When you dip your virgin toe in the deep warmth of my mud, you're never going to be the same again. Well, I didn't want you to get ambushed. There's a... Tim Petrov of Betasoft in my office. When you took on Harvey, you pitted the grinders against the rainmakers, and that was a good move. Wait a second, I could have got a sympathy mud? No, you couldn't. But the good news is... You know what? For someone who won't throw me a sympathy mud, you're very judgmental. I remember when you used to be a scumbag, but you didn't pretend you weren't. I have stacked my engines up against Bronson, and everyone else is in the world, and mine win. I don't care what you say, but that weasel is never going to be on our side. Well, maybe this will knock the cobwebs out. I'm guessing there's a catch. Ooh. I have to say I'm appalled. I mean, after you've been so above board in all your dealings with me. I did. And I shouldn't have been so standoffish with you in the file room. But you did it by putting a shiv in your fellow attorneys. Jessica plucks him from the mailroom, youngest senior partner ever. But it's going to look pretty damn sketchy if someone finds out you've handed off your first case. You know a guy in custom engraving. I know a guy in everything. The next item up for bid on The Price is Right is Mike Ross's nomination for junior partner. If you're all wondering why I have extensive damage to my skull. Is this your boss's stance or yours? Look, Rachel, I cut you some slack yesterday because you're a newbie who's in over her head. But since you clearly don't have the power to include us in this deal... I... And then you looked me in the eye and used Mike's partnership to lure me back. It was underhanded and vindictive and harmful to the entire firm. Why? Because I was wondering why you made changes to seven different addendums without redlining them for me. He's rubbing another client. He's yeah. lying to you. Rachel. Harvey, okay. Lewis came to me last night. He said he was going to flip his vote. How the hell did you get up here? Carl downstairs and I go back. There's no daylight between us. Now get the hell out of here. The reason you're in the crosshairs is because Daniel Hardman has a vendetta against me. You're telling me you set up a straw man idea to manipulate me into liking your real idea? Bought two tickets to Bermuda and said we're eloping. Well, if it was so ham-fisted, why don't you just chime in back there? Because I was there to stick it to Hardman, not clown around with some quote fest. Oh, right. And you telling Hardman that I peed in his bonsai was just pure class. There you go. See? You're leaning in. I'm proud of you. Then lucky for me, my client's Japanese and the dollar just took a dive against the yen. Are you suggesting we take the pot? You want me gone? You do the same thing. Because I'm a partner as much as you. And you're the one on the ropes. I'm not on shit. When you get to Rikers, drink bleach. So why not say whatever poor sap it is while you still can? I was wondering if I could stay with you while I do my clerkship. What's up, douche nozzle? What are you talking about? You're home early. Your mother made chicken parm. Well, why don't you eat it? Because I can't stand chicken parm anymore. Lewis? Forstman is his backer! Go ahead, call him. Of course, it might take a while since you've got to go through the prison switchboard to get a hold of him. There seemed to be a little miscommunication about what room you're in. But that's all been straightened out. 
Harvey, this is real. I know. And the first thing we need to figure out is who tipped him off. He's in custody. In the bail hearing? And I'm going to make sure he never sees the inside of a courtroom again, unless he's wearing an orange jumpsuit. I didn't have their support then, but I will now because Harvey's protege just got perp walked out of this firm. You're going to look like a bottom feeder. On the grounds that they conspired to defraud the Bar Association, every client they ever had, and the people of the United States. I'm blowing off steam. I don't think so. Potential so. fraud, the smirching, the sacrosanct name of hallowed Harvard University. Lewis, we really don't have time for this, please. Donna, people do this kind of thing all the time. It's a sleight of hand, nothing more. You better not be reneging on our deal. I also taught you, if you're gonna take a swing at someone, you better knock them out. I understand if you prefer to ask somebody who's actually completed law school, if that's legally binding. She's given us the sludge that grows at the bottom of the barrel. The only fairy tale here is the one where you believe you get out of this thing unscathed. I do not do a puffy yes, chest thing. Yes, do, but relax, because I love you and your chest. Well, I want a trial run to show me that I'm outmatched. You are outmatched, but... Whose story's looking more far-fetched now? And Gibbs is gonna say that I had knowledge of an impending subpoena, therefore it is tampering. Mike, you look like you've been through the ringer. I have to ask you a question, and... The dress was white. And the cake was vanilla with a buttercream frosting. Rebuttal witness. She just said we can't produce someone who places Mike at Harvard, and I say we can. And I think I can pinpoint the exact day you found out about Mike Ross. And if she rattles you for one of those goddamn seconds... So we're going to trial. I'm winding up with a five-year sentence. I'll let you cop to three and a half right here. Don't fall on your sword again. I have to. No, you don't. Let's not soft pedal it, Jessica. It wasn't an indiscretion. It was a flat-out crime. Is I'm betting them to get justice. Putting these people away is justice.